my global grant, develop my global grant to help locate a international partner and to be a part of helping us to implement and assess the project. So I got hands-on help from RAG said before I joined. And so when I attended the international convention in Atlanta, Georgia, I went to the RAG said booth and joined. And that is how I became involved because when I reached out, not even being a member at that point, I got help. And since that time, uh, RAGSET has grown, it's diversified, it's been enriched by the many countries that are part of us. And we look forward to being further enriched and are enriched by your presence as a chapter and how we are just so over happy that you have joined us and we know we will learn from you and you'll learn from us. And so again, thank you so much. I will be, you know, at the end of this, we'll have Q and A, but again, it's just welcome to RAG said and we embrace you and are so happy that you uh, decided to be a chapter. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Margaret, for your valuable words. It was really interesting to know all these things. Friends, uh, this session is being recorded for future references. And if there are any questions, we encourage you to post your questions in the chat box so that these questions will be taken care during Q&A session at the end of the session. Thank you once again, uh, Madam Margaret Williamson. Now we move on to the second speaker, Valerie Weffer. Am I, am I spelling it correctly, uh, Richard and Valerie? Yes, you are. Thank you, Shankar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, to, just to know about uh, uh, Valerie K. Weffer. She's the Rotary International Director 2020-2022. Valerie Weffer joined Rotary in 2005 in order to fuel her passion for making an impact that matters. Valerie was District Governor of RI District 7070 covering the greater Toronto area in 2013-14. Now residing in Collingwood, her home club is the Rotary Club of Collingwood, South Georgian Bay, RA District 7010. Valerie has continued to serve Rotary in a number of international roles. She is an international trainer, a member of the host organizing convention committee Toronto 2018, representative of the Rotary International President and is an elected member of the Rotary International Board for 2020-2022. During Valerie's tenure as a Rotarian, she has participated and led many initiatives, including a recent mission to Kosovo with Gift of Life International. She has also served as the vocational training team leader to Australia in 2010, focusing on youth mental health, a National Immunization Day in India in 2012, and has traveled to Kenya and Tanzania to audit long-term Rotary Foundation grant activity. In her non-Rotary life, Valerie had a 27-year career as a restaurant owner in Toronto. The brand Tim Hortons is the most recognized and iconic franchise in Canada. The Wafer's operation was best known for its inclusive hiring practices and accessibility, especially in the area of employment. Valerie and her husband of 33 years, Mark or Paul Harris Fellows, Bequest Society members and major donors to the Rotary Foundation. Welcome, Madam Valerie Weffer, past district governor. Please join hands for Valerie. Over to you, Madam, for your thoughts. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It's an absolute honor to be with you this evening. And for those of us in North America this morning, um, I serve on the RAGSED board as the liaison, um, a director that is in charge of liaison to Rotary International. And today I wanna to give you a brief overview of the importance of RAGSED and Rotary International's focus on community and economic development. As we know, nearly 800 million people live on less than $1.90 a day. 
And as people of action, Rotary members are passionate about providing sustainable solutions to poverty. And our members and the Rotary Foundation work to support and strengthen local entrepreneurs. We carry out service projects that enhance economic and community development, and we create opportunities for decent and productive work with equity and inclusion in mind. We also strengthen local entrepreneurs and community leaders, particularly women in impoverished communities. We provide training and access to well-paying jobs and financial management institutions through our work under the area of focus, economic and community development. Last year, the Rotary Foundation invested through global grants, $9.2 million to grow local economies and reduce poverty. And we know that 795 million people or one in nine in the world do not have enough to eat. And 60% of the world's hungry people are women and girls. And if we look to Rotary's strategic partnerships, we know that we're not alone and we are stronger when we collaborate and work together. UNICEF and their work focus on many areas that are strategically aligned to Rotary and we work and collaborate closely. The WHO, a partner in health and the eradication of polio and other diseases, responding to health needs and crisis that are often a result of poverty. And of course, there's a strong alliance with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Rotary's seven areas of focus. There's a synergy and a crossover in our goals and our priorities. If we can address poverty, we can address water and sanitation, health, literacy, peace, and the environment. The number one goal is the elimination of poverty everywhere. And while poverty has been decreasing worldwide, the challenge we face today is that more than four years of progress against poverty has been erased by COVID-19. And as we see around the world, we're in rising inflation and the impacts of war in Ukraine has set us back even further. If we want to live in a world where everyone has the opportunities and resources they need to thrive, where no one is discriminated against, and where everyone's rights are protected, we need social equity. But we won't achieve that in the world by treating everyone the same, because not everyone is the same. Social equity is impartiality, fairness, and justice for all people in social policy. Social equity takes into account systemic inequities to ensure everyone in a community has access to the same opportunities and the same outcome. Equity of all kinds acknowledges that inequalities exist and works to eliminate them. Unfortunately, one of the main inequities in many parts of the world is gender-based discrimination and the accompanying challenges to escape poverty. And this leads me to the importance of RAGSED, our partnerships and our cadre of experts. Our members promote economic and community development and reduce poverty in underserved communities through training, well-paying jobs, and access, as I said, to financial management institutions. Projects range from providing people with equipment to vocational training. Our members work to strengthen local entrepreneurs and community leaders, again, particularly women in under impoverished communities. The Rotary Action Group is a source of knowledge and expertise to help Rotarians plan, implement, and manage impactful and sustainable economic development projects that create lasting change in poor and underserved communities. And the key words, are really impactful and sustainable. Impactful is the changes that, that our communities benefit from, both socially and financially. The measured impact is how many children might stay in school because of a project that provided clean water to every member of the community, or how much time was saved by the family unit 
again, usually the girls, and the measurable impact of the health of the community when we provide a source of community water. Sustainable and lasting change is how we ensure that benefits will continue long after initial rotary participation has been completed. Giving loans or financial support alone will not alleviate poverty. Programs of support with tools and training, followed by regular follow-up by our mentors and our peer-to-peer -peer learning. The sustainable change isn't that there's more water in the village, but that more women are employed, self-confidence has increased, and being able to contribute and be a role model and earning respect is the sustainable change. So our members are technical experts, experts in the field. You're gonna be hearing more about what we can provide you as far as support and how we can support you as, as a chapter. As President Margaret said, this is such a wonderful relationship where we will learn from each other and we will help to guide each other through critical needs assessments and connections that we can each make in our community to make that lasting change. I'll just close by saying, I don't need to remind everyone that Rotarians are people of action. And together we create opportunities to help individuals and communities thrive. So my call to action to you is to share your story, advertise your chapter, utilize your community of experts, connect with Rotarians and support each other to provide social equity to communities around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Valerie, yeah, for using such key words, very impressive words like water and sanitation, peace, poverty alleviation, discrimination-free world, social equity, justice to all, women empowerment, sustainability. Thanks so much for sharing such scintillating thoughts. We appreciate your presence and sharing thoughts with us. Now, to move on, I would like to introduce Nick Frankel, well, as the next speaker over here, Nick Frankel joined the Rotary Club of Westlake Village Sunrise in 2003. He was club president in Rotary year 2006 and 7. During his year as president, the club was selected the best medium club in District 5240 and the best large service organization in his home community of Thousand Oaks. Nick served as district governor of Rotary District 5240 in 2016-17. Prior to that, Nick served District 5240 in various positions. He is currently the District Stewardship Chair and a Coordinator for the District 5240 Peace Builder Club Program. Nick is a major donor and member of the Bequest, Bequest uh, Society and the Paul Harris Society. He is a graduate of the District 5240 PRLS and Master PRLS Leadership Training Programs. Nick is retired from a career in software development management and international telecommunications. He has served on the Southwest Pets Committee and the Zone 2627 Education Committee, helping to train future Rotary leaders. Nick is the immediate past chair of Rotary Action Group for Community Economic Development, an organization that helps Rotarians plan, implement, and manage projects that alleviate poverty and create impactful and sustainable economic improvements in poor and, and underserved communities. He is also an advisor and mentor to students in the Pepperdine University Master's Program in Social Entrepreneurship. Nick has participated in projects around the world. He has seen how Rotarians change the world one life at a time. While understanding that the people most changed by humanitarian projects are the Rotarians themselves. Over to you, Nick Frankel. Rotarian Nick, you can kindly there unmute yourself. There we are. Good morning from Southern California. It is a little early here, so if I uh, sound a little bit like I'm just waking up, it's because I am. But I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to join with you this morning and to talk to you a little bit about what we have learned as an action group on how to create impactful and sustainable community economic development projects and what you can do to, to do the same. 
if you'll give me just a moment to uh, get the screen shared, and we will be on our way. And hopefully now you should be able to see my screen. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we can. All right. Please go ahead. Well, again, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to spend time with you today to talk about community economic development and how together we can eliminate poverty by empowering people. Valerie all has already spoken to you about the mission of the Rotary Action Group for Community Economic Development, or RAG said. And you're going to hear time and again that it's not simply completing a project, but it's understanding the impact and the sustainability of those projects to create lasting change in the communities that we serve. The two words again being impactful and sustainable. My Rotary Club has just completed a community, a project with a community clinic in Venezuela that needed equipment and supplies. The project was successful. We provided much needed modern equipment and a generator to the clinic. But let's take a look at the impact. The number of services offered locally has doubled. The generator prevents service interruptions, so you get continuous service. The number of patients served per month has increased by three, and the cost to each patient has decreased significantly. Sustainable, how do we ensure that when Rotary leaves, the benefits of the project continue? In this particular clinic project, Ownership of the equipment by the clinic and training provided to the people who work at the clinic provides local sustainability without reliance on grants or donations from others. For the next few minutes, I wanna share some of the lessons we've learned in the action group and take a look at several projects from different parts of the world. When you think of community economic development, the first thing that often comes to mind is community, is capital investment. Capital may be needed, but it's often not the most important element in starting or sustaining an economic development project. There are actually six pillars shown here that are required to support a sustainable, an impactful change in community economic situations. All projects, as you know, begin with a community assessment. What are the economic and cultural characteristics of the community? What are its economic needs? The assessment confirms that economic development is a high priority and that the community is receptive to the idea of economic investment and improvement. The most important pillar, as many of you know, is education. Education provides basic business and technical skills and helps create a plan that becomes the roadmap for starting and then sustaining improvements to the economy of a community. Capital provides the resources needed to support the plan. It can be money, but it can also be equipment or services or human capital. Projects need capital to be there when scheduled and a method for managing it. A mentor is someone who commits their time and knowledge to support the beneficiaries of the project. The mentor reviews project performance, helps anticipate and mitigate problems, and most important of all, helps celebrate successes. Growth 
in an economic situation comes from increasing access to markets or creating new products. Networking is the next logical step once the initial economic goals have been achieved. And finally, evaluation. Evaluation tells us how we're doing. And it also provides feedback to the investors and to the community that is being served. Evaluation also documents the impact on the community, both financially and socially. And while a project may not require all six pillars, they must each be considered as you create your community economic development project. So let's travel the world and look at some different example projects. The Rotary Club of Abington Vesper initiated a project in 1997 to help farmers in the Mubende district of Uganda. The project Sowing Seeds for Sustainable Development provides farmer training, education support, vocational training, environmental improvements, and microcredit in the form of a village savings group. As with all community economic developments, a critical element is education. Key farmer trainers support improved farming, microfinance, fuel saving stones, and school development projects. The trainers attend a one-year course in sustainable organic agriculture and financial services. In return for receiving free education, they work as trainers and advisors to farmer groups and schools for four years. They provide the farmers, the teachers, and the parents with access to a wealth of agricultural knowledge. Microcredit in the project begins with an interest-free three-year loan to an established group of farmers to help them create a village savings group. Small loans are provided to members of the group so that they can buy or rent land, pay for labor, or buy an animal or seeds. After three years, the initial group loan is repaid, but the group will have built the equivalent amount of the original loan as its own capital. The group continues lending to its members, and the return capital is now moved to a new group. Let's take a look at the impact. Loans have been met, provided to 135 farmer groups and have touched the lives of 25,000 people. Farmers benefit from agricultural know-how and skills. Their increased income eliminates hunger and provides for education for their children and farm and home improvements. And easily produced fuel-saving stones return time, improve health, and protect the environment. Let's take a look at a vocational training project in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Stolak is a city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's made up of three different ethnic groups that have virtually no interaction with each other. And unemployment, unemployment for women was 85%. A Rotary grant helped create a cooperative and teach the women to grow, sun-dry, and sell tomatoes in the local market as a means of improving the economic condition of the women themselves and of the entire community. So what's the impact? Well, the production of tomatoes increased by 20%. And over the course of the beginning of the cooperative, more than 30 additional women applied for training. Four new sites were established where product was being sold. And perhaps most important, there is a 20% increase in the income of the women in the cooperative from the beginning of the project to when the project was completed and Rotary moved on. That growth continues today. There's also a peace benefit. 
as the women of the three ethnic groups have come together in the cooperative and began to rebuild trust in each other and in the community. Let's take a look at a microfinance project. When we think of microfinance projects, we often visualize a developing country where loans and small dollar amounts can lift people and communities out of poverty. But you know, microfinance has the same impact in the developed world. With my community in California suffering from the Great Recession, Rotarians in my district who had participated in successful microfinance projects in other countries asked, why not here? They received a $240,000 grant from the Rotary Foundation, the first grant for microfinance in a developed country. A partnership was formed with a local microfinance institution that had a long and successful record in the local community and identified the target population as low-income Spanish-speaking women. So again, let's take a look at the impact. One half of the grant went to provide Spanish language curriculum and outreach. The other half went to a revolving loan fund. And as of about a year ago, the fund supported 35 businesses with loans totaling almost $360,000. And like microfinance projects all over the world was experiencing a repayment rate of 97%. The impact on the local community is more than $5 million a year in taxable income back to the community. And interestingly enough, today, 41% of the loan applicants to the microfinance institution now come up through the Spanish language program created with a Rotary Foundation grant. Rotarians truly are people of action. You as members of the chapter will work together with Rotarians all over the world to create opportunities that will help individuals and communities thrive financially and socially. So how can the Rotary Action Group for Community Economic Development help you? Expert advice help with needs assessment and identification of project partners, helping you find sources of money or curriculum for training, assisting you with best practices and project evaluation. Now you've heard a couple of our stories from Margaret, from Valerie, from me, and now as members of the chapter, it's now your turn. Find your project, change lives, write your own stories, and then share it with others. For more information, visit our website or our Facebook page, because together we can truly imagine a world without poverty. And then we working together can help create it. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your excellent insights in the areas of sustainable community economic development projects, microfinance, farming projects, assigning mentors, evaluation and feedback to investors, and creating documentation among other benefits. Nick, it was excellent. The outcome like tomato production increased by 20%, income of women in cooperative increased by 20%, peace benefit and rebuild trust, the greatest thing in this world, in community. Wonderful achievement. Thank you so much, Nick, for sharing. And the last but not the least, the impact of 5.39, close to 5.39 million US dollar per year. Great job, Nick. Thank you so much for sharing all these things with us. Now we move on to the next speaker, Bonaventure Fandohan. Am I right, uh, Bonaventure Fandohan? Is it the right spelling or pronunciation? He's the area focus manager 
community economic development program grants as the area of focus manager for economic community development i he is responsible for aligning service and grant activity and strategic partnerships he serves as a subject matter expert for rotary staff and volunteer leadership as well as a rotary ecd resource that is economic and community development resource on training for rotarians in order to build their cap capacity to address economic and community development issues he also regularly advises on the design of strategic partnerships that relate to economic and community development he regularly advises rotary program and grant staff including regional grants officers and regional grants managers on the eligibility of global grant applications in the ecd area of focus including women and youth economic empowerment access to microfinance agriculture and other livelihoods opportunities creation this is mr bonaventure fandohan for you friends over to you bonaventure thank you rotarian thank you so much uh, i'm i want to see if i can share my my screen it doesn't allow me to share my screen here i don't know my correct uh, may i request rotarian gomathi to help okay yes rotarian can you guys see, can you guys see my screen yes yes uh, bonaventure we can yeah we can see us thank you thank you so much uh, thank you rotarian for 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 your very nice presentation especially rotarian now uh, a nick for that presentation that presentation is basically the, a practical matter of how you change lives how to write you write your own stories and how to you put rotary international on the map and to do that the foundation offer to rotary and elara vehicle resource vehicles and one of them is global grant so as a rotarian who have not done it before as a rotarian who has seen people doing good and who have never done it this is an opportunity for you to know how you can design your global grant so so global grant are known to be very large grant we have other grant like a district grant we have also what we call program of scale but global grant is designed not only for a, to to raise more funds but also to 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 have more partners around the idea that you want to 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 develop and the idea you want to support in your own community so as in it has to be aligned with a one of area of focus it also you also need if you want to do a global grant you also need international partners somebody from another district somebody from another club and you need to raise at least some funding and come to the to the foundation and request any percent match from the world fund so as a as a vehicle global grant has to be aligned with one of those six, seven area of focus is what those seven area of focus constitute our causes we need to concentrate our effort to those one of those seven area of focus if we don't have if the project we want to develop the project we want to design is not aligned with any of those seven area of focus The, the, the global grant may not move forward if the foundation will deny it so those seven area of focus are peace and conflict prevention disease prevention and treatment water and sanitation and hygiene maternal and child health basic education and literacy environment and naturally community economic development so besides the fact that your global grant has to be aligned with one of those seven area of focus they have to to 
to go to the sustainability check. Rotary Foundation and Rotary International, they, they, are, they want us to have impact in our own community. They want, they want us to change lives. And for us to do it well, we need to follow what we call the sustainability uh, check. Sustainability means different things for different organizations. For Rotary International, it means implementing some solution to local need beyond the, the grant funding, beyond after the grant funding end. And, and we have seven six steps that we use to check those sustainability. The first step is start with the community. We believe we want to change life. So we want to talk to those who are in that community. We want to start with them. How do, how do they, they know the community? How do they share that community with us? How do they identify, them? They identify a need? How do they develop their own solution? That is how we start with the community. And we make sure that the value, principle, and culture of a community is taken into account in our grant. If we felt that first step, it would be difficult for us to go back because the project may be great on paper, but in reality, it may not have the, the culture check, it may not have the strength check, it may not have the need check that we need for the project to move forward. The second step is of the, the local ownership. We, as a Rotarian, we live maybe 10 miles or 10 kilometers from the community. We may know that we may know, we may have some family there, but we want them to take ownership of the project. We want them to, to be the one leading that project. We want them to be the pioneer of that project because after a couple of years, one or two years, if we don't do well, you know, the project may disappear if they don't take the charge. So we want to encourage them to take the ownership, even from the beginning of a project, during the design phase, we talk to them. We, we look at the, the leadership in that community. We see who in that community can take ownership of that. If we, we don't do that well, your, our project may pass the application level. It may even pass at the Rotary Foundation. But at the end of the day, the impact that we want to have may not get there. So encourage ownership is very important. The third step on the sustainability check is uh, provide training. And Nick has explained very well the, the concept. You know, we want to change people's lives. If we don't give those people the skill and the the behavior or the understanding of the need to have for the project to be successful, we may not pass our impact check. So providing training is very important as a, as a process of the application of global grant. The first step is buy local. Buy local is, is very critical, it is very important because if we take a project that we want to we design with a community and we buy everything from Germany. We live in India, but everything is coming from Germany. After the, the global grant and funding end, we may not have a, a small spare part to replace some equipment of that project. And that does not help the sustainability of the project. So by local, not only reinforce the capacity of the, and the ownership of the community, but also help them to be able to continue after the, the fund ends. The fifth step on this sustainability check is find local funding. We are talking about the project should continue after the foundation grant end. So it will be good to start early in the process to start looking at those who can participate locally. Bring some funding. It can be a government, bring some small funding. It can be a private, it can be a corporate that we know locally 
who is willing to bring some funding to this project. Talk to them, see if they can bring something. The idea is, is create more ownership at a local level and help the community to be on their own when the grant ends. The sixth and last step on the sustainability check is measure our, our success. This is very important because we want to have impact. We want to create a solution that will save lives. How do we measure our impact? How do we know what we have done have changed people's lives? Have we collected some information at the beginning? What we people call baseline. Do we know during the implementation of that project, something has changed? We may not know them if we have not gathering, we have not gathered some, some information at the beginning. So it's important to measure our success. Those are the six pillars for sustainability check. And those are very important. If we miss the sustainability check, we, we will miss the, 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 the impact aspect of the project. We may we will miss other aspects that in that project that can change people's lives. So I wanna talk, I wanna talk about another aspect is uh, the qualification. Before you apply for the grant, you, before you think about sustainability, you have to be qualified. Your club has to be qualified. Is your club qualified? The, 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 the club has to go through a process to be qualified. And for the, 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 before the, the, the qualification of the club, please, we need to talk first about the district qualification. The, the district qualification requires the district leader to complete the qualification process online each year. It also, they need also to agree on the MOU to sign, and they need to conduct a grant management seminar for clubs. If a district is not qualified, you, your, your club is not qualified. And if your club is not qualified, you cannot apply for the global grant. Let's look at the, qual the, the club qualification. For the club qualification, you need to, to go to the, to the district leaders and ask what are the requirements for, the, for, for your club to be qualified. Some districts have different rules, and the club has to, to, ag to agree to implement the, the, the club MOU. The member has to take some classes. They have to go to the process that, that are required by the district leaders. That club qualification and district qualification make the first pillar before you apply for global club, before you want to talk about sustainability before you, you even want to talk about other aspects. But if you don't pass those two steps first, it'll be difficult. So, like I said earlier, online grant management seminar is very important. It's one of the requirements for the club and the district to be qualified. So, let's talk about the, our club is qualified, our district is qualified, we know where we want to do our project. It's important for us to check with the community where the project will be implemented. It's called community assessment. It's a requirement for a global grant. You know, five years ago, with community assessment was not a requirement. But it's a requirement because we have seen a lot of projects that has been designed outside of a district, outside of a region that the project is supposed to be implemented. So having a community assessment is a very important aspect that helps us to know who we want to work with, what they take as a priority, and why that is a priority for them. So I mean, the strength, the weaknesses, the need, and the asset of that community. So if you want to know the needs, talk to people in the community. They are the first beneficiaries of your project. Talk to them, know the, the need. Talk to other organizations working in that environment. It can be an NGO, it can be 
an older volunteer group working already in the community, that will give you a sense of what you want to do and what is priority for that community. And also provide you some valuable relationship, like I said earlier, and encourage members of that community to participate to the project and take the ownership that we described earlier. So there are some as community assessment tool. One of them is community meeting, for example, a, 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 a town hall meeting can be community meeting where we gather everybody, we discuss with them, we ask them questions about what they think is priority for them, what, how they rank them, why they think is all of those questioning during the process help that community to give you the best solution they think to solve the problem they have on hand. We also have a survey. It can be like a, a key informant, you know, a interview. It can also be a focus group where we have a group of women, where we talk to them with group of young, young people, a group of uh, a young men, where we discuss with them. We got another tool is asset inventory where we ask the community member to, to tell us what they think is the most important asset in that community. People can tell you, we have a very good land. We have uh, a, a youth who, are, who work very hard. All of those are assets that we can, we can build on to design the project. We can also use what we call community mapping, where in a group with the community members, we walk through the community to see what they have as a you know, physical environment. You can be just look at the trees, look at the farm and discuss with them. All of those tools can be used and you can see them as a community assessment tool. We have a, a, a guide on, on our website that you can go and see. Those will help you to shape what we, the community assessment. If you have a global grant without community assessment, that global grant will, may not be eligible, it will be denied. So a better solution is to make sure that a community assessment is well done to move forward with the process. So another, criti another uh, critical uh, uh, requirement is partners. It's very important. And uh, I talked to a friend of mine who is a Rotarian in Israel, and we were talking, I said, he told me, Buddha, one of uh, my question is, how can I find partners? I've been asking to, that question to a lot of people and nobody, nobody can help me to find partners. And I told him that the best way is to talk to your friends like you, you have been doing, is to just go to a Rotary Convention and talk to somebody and to reach out. So part, find partner is very critical because the global grant required club and district to have you know, international partners if you have a sponsor or if you are an international partner to find a host partner. So have some discussion. It can be online discussion. Talk to Rotary Action Group, for example. Talk to RAC CD about how, how do I find partners. Go to Project First. Go to Rotary Fellowship. Talk to people you know. Partners is important. Without partners with the impact of a design global grant may be very difficult. So those are, I know that, you know, it's for those who have been doing global grant, it's just a brief presentation of how to design a global grant. It can be complex, but it doesn't have to be. We can talk to Rotarian that we know, we can talk to cadre members that we know who have the experience. You can even reach out to your Rotary, uh, uh, to a to Rotary grant officer of your area and say, here's what I'm doing. I need your help. Give me some idea how I can do this. Those are some ideas I want to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bonaventure. Thanks for educating us on the global grant. 
particularly with international partners in the seven areas of focus, what you mentioned, it's a very, very relevant topic that you said. To make a GG, the global grant sustainable, you also mentioned topics like encourage local owners, provide training and skill among other key points, what you mentioned today. You also spoke about community assessment tools. Very impressive, uh, Bonaventure. Thank you so much from India once again. Friends, uh, I, I welcome many of the Rotarians who have joined later part of the time when we start, after we started the program, Rotarian Ramesh from Panipat and many other Rotarians from other districts of India and also from overseas. Thank you all for being here. Now we move on. The next speaker that we have, uh, we have our own Rotarian Rakesh Babuji to tell all of us about this chapter Dakshin Patha, to, to introduce this chapter. Rotarian Rakesh Babuji professionally is a founder and promoter of DigiWord Solutions Private Limited. It's a cyber security, robotics, AI, ML, IT services company. He's an inventor, promoter of Cubic India, automotive automation, tech sapiens, IT solutions, fauna, shauna, tech startup, and uh, pets for joy, tech startup, and flora, shauna, DW leadership studio, coaching and training, and former director of 24-7 Inc. From Rotary perspective, he's a community service director 2019-2020 from Rotary Bangalore, Elahanka, chairman of Basis 2.2-1920, and director of public image 2021, and co-chairman Basis 3.0-2021. We are very proud to have you, Ritter and Rakesh, uh, along with us here. He is right now in rally. He's from US, North Carolina, and an excellent hard worker. And I request Rotarian Rakesh Babuji to tell us, give an introduction about Dakshin Pata, uh, which you have taken the lead. Over to you, Rotarian Rakesh. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. Well, before I start off with Dakshin Pata, I just wanted to give a brief introduction about the rags in our district. And this is uh, on behalf of uh, Rotarian Dragu. With a total of 27 major rags worldwide ordained by Rotary International, our district 3190 launched 13 rags and counting, the highest number among the South Asian districts. And to name them, blindness prevention, blood donation, menstrual hygiene, water and sanitation, health education and wellness, environmental sustainability, Alzheimer's and dementia, multiple cirrhosis, basic education and literacy, food and plant supplements, endangered species, mental health. The last four being the latest, just a few months old. These groups were brought and introduced to action in the year 2018. And since then, they've restored the Koira Lake, distributed menstrual cloth pads, conducted breast cancer awareness and prevention among the textile workers, multiple blood donation camps, awareness of Alzheimer's, and uh, book launch for caregivers, menstrual hygiene awareness, multiple cirrhosis awareness, and free cataract surgeries. All these were accomplished by joining hands with several Rotary clubs, eager to volunteer Rotarians and Rotractors, clearly showing as a district how progressive and advocative we are with the Rotary Action Groups as people of action. Well, this was the list, but now let's go to the next slide to talk about Dakshin Pata. Well, the arising. Dakshin Pata, which actually means route to the south, which we redefine as route to South Asia. Our theme, which we kind of borrowed from the Raxit website, two beautiful sentences, creating opportunities by investing in communities. Raxit opens opportunities for Rotarians to manage impactful, sustainable economic development projects and create lasting changes in poor and underserved communities. 
I request that you pay close attention here, dear friends. Ragsit invests in resources in communities creating opportunities for Rotarians, for Rotarians to manage impactful, sustainable economic development projects and create lasting changes in poor and underserved communities. In other words, Ragsid enables, empowers Rotarians, that is, enables and empowers Rotarians with their humanitarian actions, which in this context would be community economic development. I urge all of you to be a part of this wonderful campaign for lasting human service, not just to someone personally, but to a whole family, community, village, or a country, and to all her humanity. To next slide. The mission, the mission of RAGSID is to be a source of knowledge, expertise that help Rotarians plan, implement, manage impactful and sustainable economic development projects and create lasting change in poor, underserved communities. For this, the first step that we would take would be to build a collaboration with the working entity. That is, in this case, it would be the self-help group or a micro-enterprise with Rotary and the government, looking at the kind of governmental schemes that have been introduced of late. Well, to start off with, which I again borrowed from the RAGSID and I learned from RAGSID with my short stint with them. The first thing is consultation, creating a pool of experts across a span of region, which in our case is South Asia, as a support group for different fields to monitor, direct, provide solutions to the working entity. ANA, that is assessments and analysis, conduct assessments to determine the need, feasibility of proposed projects, the practicality of methods, and determine the estimated risk and success. Partnering. Work as catalysts in empowering task commitments and success assurance building value added partnerships. Knowledge management. Develop the already existing Rotary Knowledge Repository. With all success and failure factors, learning for future references, analysis, and reports. And then funding. Connect funding sources to projects and programs. Fundraising, like we normally do. Government schemes and Rotary aid. Training and education, which is key again. Vocational training based on assessments and analysis. Best practices conducted internationally and nationally conferences and bringing work groups together to discuss and share best practices and facilitate and regulate business relationships. Community outreach, develop a program to inspire the community to say, to throw stories. I was talking to a Rotarian friend of mine and he was talking to me about a group that actually reaches out to many of these villages and speaks stories inspiring stories and that kind of awakens them and makes them reach out to greater things so that's that's amazing i kind of felt that we would have to uh, kind of use that in our practice as well and then evaluation metricize success criteria and factors define short term and long term goals evaluate and measure progress making it simple then, the next slide, the RAGSID strategy. Focused empowering. So, the areas of our focused empowering would be women, youth, and the farmer. Several research and studies time and again have shown the impact of focused concentration in these areas 
resulting in a prosperous community. So what is going to be Raxid chapter's groundwork? Partner with clubs and districts to form key focus groups to execute. Develop a program to implement best practices with continuous improvement to churn out progressing results. While the biggest challenges faced by businesses have been resources, delivery, and market. In response to these challenges, as part of our proactive solutioning framework, the below would be offered. And that's what you see with our base camp support. That is vocational training, funding by speaking to banks and other institutions that can help with social or special provisioning and consideration. Now, this is exactly what my friend Bonaventure was talking about. Experts for that is borrowing from local banks and institutions. Experts for the know-how and research translation specific to products, legal and regulatory compliances, financial management, raw material sourcing, et cetera. And in, with regards to delivery, that is technology, human resources, tools, and methods, real-time information and analysis, advisory, and quality development. Markets, as Rotary do, the Rotarians do the best. Connections, information and strategy, and logistics. While we do all these things, one other thing that we would want to introduce would be having biannual international and national conferences. While we know that communication is going to be a great issue, we are going to have automated translators with volunteers operating it in every booth so that communication is no longer a challenge. And before I end, I would like to thank the 18 volunteers who reached out to me last week to sign up, to lead and be able leaders. And I also thank our great proponent, especially for Gram Lakshmi and Basis, which are flagships, not only for our club, but also for Dakshin Pata, Mr. and PDG Nagendra Prasad for accepting to be a promoter and a mentor. Thank you very much, sir. And thanks everyone for listening. Thank you, Ritter and Rakesh Babuji. Thank you so much for throwing so many arrows from your career. Now over to question and answer session. And I would request uh, Rotarian Rakesh to continue to moderate this session. Uh, Rotarian Gomati, kindly help on the questions in the chat box or whoever asks questions. The hall is open for questions. Over to you, Rakesh. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, dear friends, if you have any questions, we have uh, 10 more minutes, which we could use to answer questions so you could direct it to any of the speakers that you've had okay so is there any question in the chat box rotarian gomati okay so we have from yeah. ananta but the question is what is typical the typical time for sanction of a global grant now. I'll... That would be to uh, Bonaventure. Bonaventure. Uh, if I understand very well, the question is to know how long the global grant uh, that, That's a question? Uh, or... it, no, normally, how long would it take to uh, get a proper approval from end to end, like once it it's submitted? It, it, it depends. It depends of uh, if you 
if you do your your due diligence at the beginning, you'll be able to do very well a community assessment, have a conversation, and be able to do some administrative work. For example, uh, open the bank account and have your 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 district leader sign on on your grant and align the grant with the area one of area focus and uh, look at the community assessment and have done very well a connection between the community assessment and the project most in two months it should be approved you know we used to okay. have like 90, 90, 90 days but it's less less than that because at the beginning you can even send your proposal to a regional grant officer and they give you some feedback and based on your that feedback you move quicker Okay, thank you very much. Is there a place or a location where we could go and take a look at these things on the Rotary website? The, on the website. You're talking about the, to look at the information on, on on Global Grant, all of that? No, no not only that. It's also about these things. Is there yes. a, a place where we could go and track how you know, it's progressing, the, the approval process. No, we don't have somewhere you can track your grant approval process. But if you work with your regional grant officer, you should know because when we tell you, oh, okay. we are moving forward, it should not take time. Yeah. Okay, that's valuable information. Thank you very much, Bonaventure. And before we go to the next question, uh, Rotarian Sadeep says, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for lifeline, lifetime. That is uh, not stew. That is what Raxit is all about, is what he says. That's a very good compliment. Thank you very much. Okay, the next question is from Rotarian Raghu Alam. What should be the minimum monetary contribution to be given by a Rotary partner for a global grant? I will, I will, I will let the Nick answer that question, but I don't think it's very the minimum that required for the partners. I know club in Africa, they give a 300 to be part of a grant. The, the idea for them is not to be part of a process and to learn from the process. But, you know, Nick practically has more experience in that case. Nick, what do you think? Thank you very much, Bonaventure. By the way, to follow up on the point that Bonaventure made earlier, if you want to shorten the approval time for your global grant, make contact with your grant coordinator during the time that you're creating the grant application. They are very, very helpful and you can, they can help you create a grant where once it's submitted, it will shorten the turnaround time. The Rotary Foundation requires that 15% of the global grant come from outside of the host district. They say inter, from the international partner, but it becomes from outside of the host district. So there is a minimum requirement that your international partner or their partners uh, donate 15%. Other than that, there are no specific requirements, uh, particularly if you're looking at a chapter, it might be a great opportunity for people to collaborate together by investing in a grant. The other thing that I'm seeing going on right now, and I'm involved in two of them, are multi-district grants, where the host club has formed a partnership with four other districts, because these are very large grants. So I, I think that the answer, the specific answer to your question is 15%, but I would recommend that you continue to involve as many people and as many clubs as you can it typically results in more publicity for Rotary and a more impactful grant. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, Rutin Rakesh, one last question we can take. We are almost coming to the end. 
if at all any question is there sir no more on the chat as of now all right all right thank you so much and now we move on uh, rakesh can we proceed further yes sir that's move yeah, ahead thank you so much now may i request rotarian gomati for vote of thanks hi everyone on behalf of our club rotary bangalore yalahanka and our president sandeep bansal i extend a hearty vote of thanks to all of the speakers today margaret williamson nick frankel well valery wafer bono went to fondahan and rakesh babu ji who spared time from the busy schedule to launch takshin pata the new raxit chapter today we had an opportunity to hear your wonderful thoughts and plans this will surely encourage all our members rotarians road tractors to explore opportunities that we can create to improve and underserved communities i thank you very much once again thank you thanks uh, rotarian gomati friends i wish to conclude with the chanting of peace in sanskrit language which promulgates universal brotherhood peace and happiness across the globe i quote om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadraani pashyantu ma kaschit dukkha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 which means in english may all living beings be at peace may no one suffer from illness may all see what is auspicious may no one suffer peace 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 let alone peace prevail all over the world i rotarian shankar shastri here with sign off the link will be open for couple of more minutes for fellowship thank you all once again best wishes to all of you thank you thank you everyone for joining thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah special thanks, thanks to all the uh, uh, dignitaries from, from the district and, and my fellow presidents those who made it possible, possible to join here yeah. thank thank you Thanks, Margaret. We can now close. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Rakesh. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Rakesh, we should have more sessions uh, for in-depth learning from uh, the uh, the you know the scholars yes. that we have today. We really yes. enjoyed the sessions. Thank you so much for uh, giving this opportunity to all of us. Oh, you're so welcome, and we look forward to having more sessions and being in conversation more for going forward. Okay. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Right. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 Bye.